I'm a cancer surgeon version of urologic oncologist, and I am the chair of urology at the University of Virginia. If you're a man who's diagnosed either with very low risk prostate cancer, which means you just have a very small amount of Gleason 3 plus 3 and a PSA less than 10, you should not be doing surgery. You should not be doing radiation. You should be doing active surveillance. And for low risk men, meaning you have maybe a higher volume of Gleason 3 plus 3, still a PSA less than 10, organ confined disease, you should be doing active surveillance as well. Prostate cancer is really unique and it's not just cancer. You know, you hear a cancer diagnosis and you think this must be terrible, it's aggressive, I have to treat it right away. And prostate cancer is really different. Whereas in a lot of other cancers, you know, everyone around you, your family members and friends will say, what stage is it? What stage is it? And in prostate cancer, that's one small part of the whole equation. So why is, why can we just watch cancer? Back to your question, why is active surveillance the right thing to do? We're catching the cancer 10 to 15 years before we otherwise would have. And depending upon a man's health or their age, maybe that 10 to 15 year earlier diagnosis means that they might never need treatment in their lifetime. Maybe this cancer isn't ever going to be dangerous. Maybe they're going to outlive the cancer and die with the cancer, not from it. The treatments that we're going to talk about, surgery or radiation, they have really serious side effects. Even in the best hands, even in the most talented radiation oncologists and surgeons, you still have side effects that affects a man's quality of life in terms of urinary function, sexual function. So why give someone side effects if you're not going to actually save their life, make them live longer, or give them a better life, right? Yeah. So that's why active surveillance is on the table. And I think I would clarify, watchful waiting nowadays means you just kind of monitor PSA, you're never gonna intervene, you're never gonna treat for cure and just watch the cancer. Whereas active surveillance means we're gonna watch that cancer and when it changes, that's when you get your treatment for cure, but you have all those years of life with your great quality of life, sexual and urinary function, without having to take on the burden of the side effects instead of just the benefit of the treatment. I don't think that black men should be, have a different conversation in the sense that all men have, should have access to active surveillance. All men should have access to the best information to help them make the decision that's right for them. And so I think withholding access to active surveillance from black men is discrimination. You should not tell one group of men, you have these options and tell another group of men, well, here's different options for you because of your race. I, and, and I know it goes to the point that potentially prostate cancer is more dangerous among black men. Secondary treatment options are like backup plan. You know, what if it doesn't work? Um, and then let's talk about your life and how you want to live your life. What's important, your job, your activities. Do you want more children, um, your partner? I think it also depends on where you're receiving care. Yeah, in terms of, what do you mean by where you're receiving care? So some states have different um, insurance um, programs for people who aren't insured or are uninsured um, or don't have good insurance, for example. Even though there, you know, there is Obamacare, not everyone chooses to pay for it. So some people really don't have insurance. Some states actually have, you know, for example, California has Medi-Cal. So everyone can get insurance somehow. Other states don't necessarily have this. For high-risk patients, you do need a combination. So it's not just surgery or radiation. It's usually radiation with hormones or surgery followed by radiation and hormones. So it's a combination. Radiation is a backup plan to surgery, meaning if you do surgery and cancer cells are left behind or the cancer were to come back in the pelvis, you do radiation later. So the two go together. Um, Surgery doesn't cure everything. You know, you can't, if the cancer's metastasized, then surgery doesn't really add any value. And then you're left with radiation. So if we were to say, okay, we're only gonna choose one treatment, let's put all of our effort on surgery, then we're essentially ignoring everyone who has metastatic disease. Or I guess, contrastingly, if you go just with radiation, then anyone who's had radiation for a different malignancy, let's say somebody had colorectal cancer and already had radiation and can't get more, then you're left without an option really, or a curative option. So you have your low risk cancer, your high risk cancer, and they're almost like two different things. It's almost like we need a different name for it because low risk cancer, it's not gonna go to your bones. It's not gonna go to your brain. You know, you need to just pick, do you want surgery? Do you want radiation? Because you're probably not gonna need a backup plan. You're not gonna, you're probably gonna be cured with whatever you choose. There's an overwhelming amount of information to, to process, to learn. It's almost like learning a new language. So. 
I think it's one thing patients really can do to advocate for themselves is make sure you see both a surgeon and a radiation oncologist. Don't just see one. And if you're getting a second opinion, don't just keep getting second opinions with surgeons. Make sure at some point you get the other side, you know, hear from radiation oncology as well, because we are two different kinds of doctors approaching the same problem. If you're doing active surveillance, you are getting repeat biopsies. It's not an option. It's part of it. So, and you have, that's the most important part. So if you choose active surveillance, it's not like you just get your initial Gleason 6 and that's it. Um, you're getting periodic repeat biopsies, definitely at the first year to 18 months, and then maybe every two to five years thereafter. And that's the most critical part of active surveillance is if you have a Gleason 3 plus 3 and you're following it over time, and all of a sudden there's a little bit of Gleason 3 plus 4 or 4 plus 3, and that 4 component becomes present, starts to grow, that's when you're going to want to get treated when you have an increase in your grade.